Hello everyone and welcome to Season 6, Episode 10 of Pro Wrestling's Top 50. I'm your host Travis McNeil and today we continue our countdown of the Top 50 matches of 2021 with match number 41 on our list, which is the Champion Carnival Tournament match between Kento Miyahara and Jake Lee from the All Japan Pro Wrestling Champions Carnival 2021 Day 10 event held on May the 3rd of 2021. Although this wasn't advertised ahead of time as being the finals of the Champion Carnival, it essentially became the de facto final. Uh, when this match happened, it was the main event of the final night of the tour. Everybody else in the tournament had been mathematically eliminated, so it was down to these two. Uh, I feel like this is the match that everybody kind of knew going into this tournament it would come down to. It made the most sense. Um, and, and what we ended up getting here was a fantastic match that, you know, very well could have been a lot higher on this list had it have had a crowd. But we'll talk a little bit about that as we go. So this is not the first match between these two that I've talked about on this series before. Back when we were doing the, the top 50 matches of 2020, uh, these two competed in the finals of the Real World Tag League uh, in a match uh, that, you know, I talked a little bit about the rivalry and the history between these two. But to sum it up real quick, um, Kento Miyahara basically became the new ace of all Japan, very much looking to be, you know, their Hiroshi Tanahashi, you know, of this generation. Uh, he took Jake Lee under his wing in the next stream stable. Uh, Jake Lee eventually became a stable hopper. So he would end up leaving next stream. Uh, he would start sweeper. He would eventually migrate over to Jin uh, before eventually, uh, you know, settling in with his new stable that he, he came to in 2021, Total Eclipse. Um, Kento was always one step of Jake Lee. They had, you know, a few singles matches. Most notably, they met in the finals of the 2019 Champion Carnival in an absolutely incredible match that saw Miyahara win. Later on in the year, they would meet again in the final of a tournament, this time the Royal Road Tournament, where Jake Lee would finally score the three count over his partner turned rival. This would lead to a Triple Crown title match with Miyahara defending the title against Jake Lee at the start of 2020, right before the pandemic hit. Miyahara would retain the title in a, a very good match um, that some heralded as a classic. I didn't find it quite that level. Um, and, and I thought it was, you know, well below the, the Champion Carnival final in 2019, but a great match nonetheless. Um, and that would eventually lead us here. Now, you know, we'll talk about, about the elephant in the room. Uh, this match happens in a completely empty arena. Uh, by this point in 2021, for better or for worse, you know, wrestling was kind of back. You know, we were seeing large crowds start to pop up at shows again. Uh, unfortunately, you know, COVID uh, was very bad in Japan. Uh, a lot of strict regulations that were put in at that point. And we went back to this, you know, point where we had fully empty arenas. So here you have this amazingly built to match. Uh, you know, the finals of the biggest tournament that All Japan runs all year and nobody there to get into it. So uh, a little bit of a tough sell. Uh, you know, the environment was definitely lacking. Uh, the effort that these two put into this match is absolutely fantastic. So, you know, it's still a, a very worthy inclusion on this countdown. Uh, but what could have been with a hot crowd, very similar to, had, you know, what they had in 2019, this match could have been even better than this one and it could have set it over the top. Um, what we get with this match, though, is we get a very physical battle and we get, you know, this story, this built-in story of Jake Lee, you know, having this chip on his shoulder, being in Miyahara's shadow for so long, and maybe this finally being the night that he could step out of that shadow, finally vanquish his foe, get his redemption for the Champion Carnival Final two years prior, and, you know, catapult him with his new stable to success to the forefront to become the new ace of all Japan that people have been pegging him to be and win the Triple Crown as, you know, the, the winner of this tournament always gets a title shot. Uh, so we start a very intense lockup and they immediately establish a story. And one thing that, you know, Miyahara does in all of his matches that, you know, he's a very polarizing figure. You know, when you read opinion of him online, you know, some are, are you know, incredible fans of him. 
other, you know, kind of feel that he's overrated. He almost, in a way, kind of reminds me of peak New Japan Shinsuke Nakamura, where, you know, some people criticize his formula that he would use and how he could be, you know, lazy and things like that. But when it comes to a big match, he turns it on like no other. And that's kind of how I feel about Miyahara, that I think he's one of the best big match wrestlers going. Um, but, you know, a lot of his other matches, they, they tend to fail short of my expectation. But here, big match, he delivers. Um, but one thing that he does is he has, you know, he milks things for all they're worth. And this is something that, you know, generally works great in a crowd that can react. In an empty arena, eh, maybe not as powerful, but they do a really good job here selling, you know, the emotion uh, that these two have in their feud. And with this opening lockup, it's so intense and Miyahara backs Ali into the ropes and there's this elongated tease of you know will he offer up the clean break and eventually he does but it shows that you know Mia Hart kind of toyed and played with Jake Lee a little bit against these ropes and Jake Lee he's not playing on this given night and he just blasts Mia Hara with a kick and it's this great you know story that they immediately put in of you know th this guy that's been in the shadow of, you know, the ace of all Japan for so long. He, he's not going to let it happen anymore. And he's not going to be toyed with. And he's not going to be made to, to, you know, look like a fool. Uh, Miyahara, of course, you know, makes him pay for it. And they spill to the outside. And he, you know, lights him up with all sorts of headbutts. And, you know, this match, like I said, it is very, very physical. Um, we get a, a point where uh, Jake Lee, uh, he counters, you know, a suplex attempt or a brain buster attempt from Miyahara. And he catapults him, you know, stomach, midsection, ribs, sternum, whatever you want to call it, first onto the top rope. And this becomes his point of attack throughout the match. And this is something that we've been seeing in a lot of Jake Lee matches leading up to this point, especially through the Champion Carnival, where he would target that midsection area. And, you know, after he gets this, he blasts, you know, Miyahara with a kick that sends him off the apron to the floor. And, you know, just like Miyahara, you know, brutalized him at ringside with all of these headbutts, he takes the battle to the floor and he, you know, rams him repeatedly, you know, back first into the ring apron and sternum first into the guardrail and vice versa, really targeting that area. And from there, his work on it is great. He targets all of his strikes there. He hits a variety of gut busters. And he, you know, when Miyahara is on the mat, he stands on his midsection and really goes to work on it. Miyahara tries to get rolling a little bit and pick up that pace and he goes to the top rope and he's booted off back to the floor and what does Jake Lee do again? He really keeps that pressure on and does the same sequence on the floor with the apron and the guardrail really attacking that midsection. Uh, one theme that they run throughout this match though was Jake Lee going for his kill shot which is the vertical drop brain buster. He goes for it repeatedly throughout this match, and Miyahara always has an answer for it. The first time it occurs is actually on the ring apron, where Jake goes for that brain buster on the apron. Again, he's not playing around. He's going for a kill shot very early, but Miyahara counters that. It's one of his signatures, the pile driver on the ring apron, and that's enough to kind of get him back into the match. Both of these guys, you know, they use running knees very proficiently. They both kind of have that bombaye, you know, kind of harkening back to that Nakamura comment that I made earlier. Um, so after the pile driver on the apron, you know, Jake Lee hits a, a big knee to the back of the head. Well, you know, or pardon me, Mia Hart hits a big uh, knee to the back of Jake Lee's head while he's kind of propped up in the corner. And they do another great moment where Mia Hart tries to repeat a big running knee and Jake Lee just catches it and very defiantly throws away that knee and says, you know, you're not going to do, uh, you know, you're not going to hit me with that knee. Um, we get, you know, uh, this big forearm battle, um, you know, where they exchange these forearms and Mia Hart seems to get the advantage of that. So Jake Lee, you know, he goes back to that body with body strikes and it leads to this, you know, this another great, you know, kind of over the top emotional moment where both guys go chest to chest and there's, you know, so much anger and so much emotion built into this you know stare down that they have and then they go when they go back to the forearm battle you know that stare down where Jake Lee you know had to stand across from his rival that you know I think most people would agree is bet you know as being better than him you know that fires him up and allows him to win a forearm exchange this point you know at this time but then Miyahara kind of has to go a different route and go to the kicks with some kicks to the faces and we get, you know, all of these great strike exchanges here. Miyahara tries to get rolling again. It's another knee, a kitchen sink to the gut. 
So every time, you know, Mia Hara stands up to Lee, Lee has that midsection that he can keep going back to. We've talked about the Brain Buster late in the match. Lee goes for it again. Mia Hara finds an opening, slips out, hits a German suplex. Uh, he goes for the shutdown German suplex, his finishing hold, that straight jacket German suplex that he does. Um, and, you know, he works for it so good. And that's something that Mia Hara is so good where, you know, he, just, he, he milks, you know, that shutdown German suplex. He'll hold a guy, he'll deadlift him and kind of hold them halfway through the hold and it becomes a is he going to go all the way back and hit it is the guy going to fight out and it's so dramatic and this is again something that works so well in front of a crowd and it's still great here but it, it doesn't you know pack that punch that the hot crowd trying to will you know Mia Hara to hitting that German you know normally does um, but he goes for it and you know Lee fights out and again more knees to the gut uh, there's a point that's so great where you know Mia Hara is crumbled from these knees and, and Lee finally maybe feels like he has victory in the bag with this match. And while Mia Hara is on the mat, he just kind of holds him and starts hitting these repeated knees to the body. And just the great smugness that drips off of Jake Lee is so good. Very reminiscent if you're a Dragon Gate fan. The only wrestler that I feel, you know, exudes smugness like Jake Lee is Yamato, where it's just... You know, it's so smarmy, but it's also got this element of cool to it because you know that he's so good. Maybe it's the hair, you know, clearly I, I'm follically challenged. So, you know, maybe it's the long hair that, you know, really sets it over the top. I don't know, but it's these great visuals. Um, we get, you know, a big running knee to the body while Mia Har is on his hands and knees. And this leads to really the first big near fall of this match where he only gets a two. And they build into these great hot near falls. So again, you know, what's Lee going to go to? He's going to go to the Brain Buster. Well, it allows Mia Har to counter it to a small package for two. Um, he hits a big, you know, flying knee and finally, you know, gets the shutdown German suplex. But that's only good for two. A shocking near fall is that's the move that typically puts Jake Lee away. Uh, there's a great moment here. I, I talk about the signature knee strikes where both guys go for that knee and they actually collide knees where if you've ever, you know, played soccer and had that happen to you, you know how painful it is to go kneecap to kneecap. So the fact they used it as a spot here and went in with as much force as they did was just wild that they would do that. It was so painful and you could really feel it through the screen. Um, so, you know, they, they collide on these knees. Um, you know, Miyahara ends up getting another flying knee. He goes for the shutdown German suplex one more time, milks it more than ever. There's a great moment where, you know, Jake Lee can't use his hands to grab the rope because he's straight jacketed in for this move. So he actually fights the top rope and Miyahara just physically like yanks him off the rope while it's in his mouth. It was absolutely brutal. Um, but Jake Lee, you know, he's able to, to fight out. Um, he gets, you know, some more knees. He, you know, Miyahara tries to answer back with a flying knee. But at this point, it's, it's Jake Lee's willingness to win this match, to not die from that shutdown German suplex. The body shots he's hit, you know, he's got this fire in him and he knows that this is his destiny to win, that he absorbs the flying knee from Miyahara. Maybe he doesn't have quite the mustard that it would earlier in the match because of all the body shots. He hits two big head kicks that send Miyahara through a loop um, and get, ends up getting, you know, a, a Balmaye knee to the back of the head. And at this point, what's he go to? The move he's tried all match. The move he knows can beat Kento Miyahara. The vertical drop brain buster. He hits him very stoically with it. It's a great exclamation point to this great match. It's enough to keep him down for three. Jake Lee finally gets his big victory. He wins the champion carnival. But... As is the story with Jake Lee, this guy just cannot catch a break. He gets this moment, there's no fans there to celebrate it. This match was supposed to lead to him challenging Suwama for the Triple Crown. Suwama got COVID, had to vacate the title, and we ended up getting a match that I thought was a little bit of a mess. It was a triangle match between Miyahara, Lee, and Yuma Aoyagi. Um, they did, you know, the weird kind of, you have to, the dog, New Japan dog fight rules, if you're familiar with that, where you have to beat both guys consecutively. So yes, Lee got the big win over both of them, but again, it just felt weird. It wasn't the big victory that he needed. Uh, he would go on, you know, get his singles title match with Miyahara later in the year. They would go to a 60 minute draw, which on paper maybe seems great. 
There was just something about that match that didn't connect with me. We had a lot of 60-minute draws in 2021. Um, and this one, it just it felt hollow. It felt elongated for time. The crowd wasn't quite there. It was a little bit boring. Sure, they had a great you know final 10 minutes, but the match just really didn't work for me. And then unfortunately, Jake Lee would succumb to an injury once again. You know, I feel like he's been very injury prone throughout his career. He would have to forfeit the triple crown. Who would get it back? Our friend Kento Miyahara. So even though, you know, all of this disappointment for Jake Lee, it all kind of works into this story that Miyahara's got the title. He didn't defeat Lee for it. And you know when Jake Lee is going to be back in action whenever that happens. That's the big marquee match for the title. Um, and, you know, if it's anywhere near as good as the Triple Crown 2019 final or this match here was in 2021, we're in for a treat, especially if COVID restrictions are okay in Japan at that point where we can get a big crowd making lots of noise. This match, though, you know, don't let the lack of crowd discourage you. If you can get past that, it's a great battle. If you know the story, they use it well. It is still a great moment for Jake Lee, even if nobody's there to see it. Both of these guys work really hard with a very physical, compelling match. It just could have been a lot more. But unfortunately, given the circumstances, it sits at number 41. Still great. Maybe not as great as it could have been, but let's see what they're able to bring in the future for us. Uh, you can watch this match. All Japan Pro Wrestling does have a streaming service that it's available on. You can subscribe to my channel here on YouTube so that you never miss a video. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Wrestling50. And please join me again tomorrow as we continue to count down Pro Wrestling's Top 50.